This is an unfair comparison, or so I've been told, but Nebula's fleet command is a lot like the Expanse. It's a comparison, though, that not too many people are keen on. So let's step away from such comparisons and let the game stand on its own two feet, something it's very proficient at doing. In fact, it's very unique amongst real-time strategy games. And if anything, its origins can perhaps be found in real-world naval tactical warfare. I talked about the game a few months ago in a video, but wanted to come back to it due to the upcoming release of a new update called the Protectorate Update. The footage you can see on the screen right here was kindly provided by publisher Hooded Horse and allows us to get a bit of insight and a bit of a first look at the upcoming update which is releasing on the 27th of February. The update adds a brand new faction to the game known as the Outline Systems Protectorate, also known as the OSP. Now the interesting thing about Nebulous is that currently it doesn't have a campaign, but this is something that apparently is slowly being put together and we're seeing that unfold through these updates. The next step then is to add factions into the game. Currently there's just one faction known as the Shelter Alliance. This effectively is the Alliance Navy to all intents and purposes. But this singular faction is about to change in a rather explosive way. The Outline Systems Protectorate then is a breakaway state from the game's currently only faction. What makes the Protectorate very interesting and will likely make the combat very challenging and interesting is that the Protectorate has no Navy support whatsoever and therefore no naval ships. Instead, they are a ragtag band of commercial and civilian ships, including cargo vessels and many others, each of which has been rapidly converted to make them into makeshift brawling ships, the largest of which are the converted bulk cargo carriers. These are referred to as line ships and we can see them being played throughout these sequences on the screen right here. Now, as you might expect, these are a set of events, these unique two factions, they really do present two or very different ways of playing the game. For example, the line ships from the uh, Protectorate are larger than Alliance battleships and they can bring a tremendous firepower along with them. Now, unlike naval ships, unlike the Alliance ships, they have a fixed side-mounted weapons. These aren't turreted, they're not gimbaled, they are simply fixed. And one very interesting weapon at the Protectorate's disposal are the use of missiles. Missiles are converted from cargo containers. They may be slow and somewhat fragile, but apparently they will pack an enormous punch, as, well, they can carry a huge amount of such weapons. But not all Protectorate ships are as large. Right here we see a couple of shuttles which are firing a whole salvo of rockets at some larger ships off there in the distance. Now, one thing you may have noticed is the distinct lack of health bars. Ships in Nebulus don't have health bars. Instead, they have per pixel damage, which is both directional and proportionate. So, yet your ship will slowly disintegrate according to where it's been hit. We can see the ships here have been hit. They are pretty damaged. And here on the damage screen, you can see which areas need repairs. This is somewhat of an automated process. You can allow your crew to uh, fix the relevant parts of the ship for you. Or, as what's happening on the screen right here, the player is fully capable of selecting which parts to repair manually. The idea of your ship's survivability then brings us on to another subject, and that is the fact your ships are very unique. They are singular. They cannot be built or rebuilt during your playthrough, so this is not one of those RTSs where you can build a big fleet of ships as you plan your session. It means you have to really plan and think through your overall tactics and strategy. In essence, each ship is very, very important. It's little wonder then that the upcoming update, the Protectorate update, is focusing on ships. It'll bring with it 18 new weapons, 6 new ship hulls, 6 new sensors, as well as some new electronic warfare modules and two new missile types. It means that ships are extremely important and that players will need to learn the particular playstyle of each ship they pick up. To carry this comparison a little bit further, the developers have said that the Alliance Navy is very similar to many modern navies and that these navies, this Alliance Navy, is a generalist faction which can excel in many situations. The OSP's fleet, on the other hand, is in stark contrast to this. It's a cobbled together fleet taken from both civilian and commercial ships, 
largely a cargo ship, so yet yeah, players are going to need to adopt unique tactics in order to well, go against and face up to the navy, which generally will have far superior ships. It feels in like it's the perfect recipe, at least to me, for some very dynamic and emergent type of stories. Conflicts between the downtrodden and the technological superior. Hopefully then, the update is going to deliver on everything it promises and will continue to improve on the rather good foundation that Nebulous already has. I'm going to leave you right here with an exclusive look at the new trailer for the update. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Constantine, I know you've got your hands full, so I'll be brief. Things are moving a lot faster here than we expected, and the other systems are still dragging their feet. The gate blockade is established, so there's that at least. I've done my best to get you everything you asked for. Hopefully it's enough. Hopefully it's not needed. I can't imagine how hard this is for you. Almost 40 years in the fleet, and now you're fighting the same spacers you trained. I know why you're really doing it, even if you won't admit it, but regardless, your home owes you an impossible debt. None of us here know how this is going to end, but at the very least, there's one thing I am sure of. I'm glad we've got you on our side.